I'm gonna have to face my greatest fear in this video. Hornets or bees or anything like that that sting you. I remember one of my earliest memories as a kid. I was trapped in a van with a bumblebee and it stung me like right in the head. I think that's why I'm scared of them. I should be able to handle this though, don't worry. <laughs> there are some things about this bait that I don't know about yet, like the wings. I don't know if I'm gonna give it wings or not. I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do for the antenna or the antennas that this thing's gonna have. I know I'm just gonna use two treble hooks and those will sort of imitate the legs. Yeah, I got a few things to figure out with this bait, but I'm gonna get it done. It's gonna be one beefy hornet. So I'm just keeping some really little connections to each segment of wood. I'll cut through those later after I shape the body. I think it's gonna be easier to shape this body when it's all one piece. Now I'm gonna cut out the top angle or the bird's eye view angle of the Hornet. All right, I'm gonna go cut that out. Cleaned it up the best I could on the big sander. Now I gotta use some hand tools and hand sand it down to block this thing out better. I think I'm gonna make this bait with only one joint right here. I think it has a better chance of working and actually cranking if I do it that way. I'm gonna have to carve it all out in my hand with a knife. There's no way I'm gonna clamp that securely in a vise and chisel away at it. I think I'm just gonna sand every bit of this smooth with a piece of sandpaper in my hand. There's gonna be a lot of little details to carve on this thing. There's lots of little segments on the this part of the body that are like, I don't know, just lines running through that part of the body and then this has, you know, the stripes on the back. I've got the eyes, I've got the nose. It's gonna be a detailed little bait. I could cut out every segment of these details and uh, stencil them onto the bait. I'm just gonna eyeball it and get as accurate as I can. I'm gonna come up with my own design on the top too. The butt will be easy. I think the head will be easy too. It's more just this middle part. Most of the time, not doing this perfectly too makes the bait look more realistic. You know, you just gotta remember what Bob Ross always said, happy little mistakes. I hope you guys know who Bob Ross is, or else that won't make any sense. I wanted to give it like some shoulder blades on the top, something to round off up there, and paint a different color. Not exactly the same on both sides, but that doesn't matter. This just got a lot more creepy. That whole thing right there is the eye, but on hornets, they have like this little notch and the eye where the antenna comes out of. I thought that was weird. That like the eye, it goes around where the antenna comes out of. Yep, yep. Yep. Are you ignoring me? Boy. 
Okay, every single line that I drew is scored with the knife. Now I'm gonna go eat lunch, come back, and carve it out. Pork and beans. It's the lunch of champions. I've never actually carved an eye into a bait and then painted it after. I've always added the stick on eyes or glass eyes. So this will be cool to see how it turns out. So I've got material carved off of one side of every line that I scored. So now I'm gonna go back and carve off of the other side of the lines that need it. Some of them don't need it. And then I'm gonna clean that all up with sandpaper I'm not really sure after that. I'll figure it out. Okay. Everything is carved out and I got everything sanded down to 320 right now. Now's the time I'm gonna put some lead in the belly. I'm gonna drill out a, a quarter inch hole. I think that'll be enough to keep the belly down when it's cranking. All right, this is gonna be a quarter inch by quarter inch hole. There we go. So now that all of the woodworking and the carving is done on this bait, I'm gonna cut the joint right there. And then I'm gonna drill all of the pilot holes and then uh, seal it with some wood sealer before I pour the lead in it. Time to cut a hornet in half. Uh-oh, which way was down? Yeah, I think it was like that. Gotta mark which side's up. Need to break out the tiny bits. So now every pilot hole has been drilled out. I'm gonna make the hardware. doing twisted wire loops for the hook hangers and the joint connections. And this is just uh, 0.041 inch thick stainless steel lock wire. It's extremely corrosion resistant. It's pretty flexible, but it works out perfect for this kind of bait. When you twist it together like that, it gets extremely rigid. Each end of this will get glued in to each side of the bait. I'm going to do the same thing for all of the hook hangers and line ties for this bait too. Okay, it is time to seal this bait. That was easy. Mmm, lead. That's probably enough. This is a small bait. You can so easily overdo it with the lead. Just gonna use a five minute epoxy with some filler added. Forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> okay, I got it assembled. And I'm just about to put it in the test tank to see how it works. 
it floats. That's good. I didn't glue any of the hardware in yet, but I'm gonna do that now with the line ties and the hook hangers. It's nothing fancy, it's just using super glue. I'm just gonna cover the twisted part in the glue and screw it in. I guess I haven't really addressed it yet that um, this is gonna be a topwater bait because it's a hornet, you know? And I'm hoping for the, the angle of the head to move enough water or to catch enough water so that the bait will wobble on the surface and just look like a, a struggling hornet on the surface. That's the goal. I'm not gonna glue this in and join the two pieces together yet. I'm gonna do that after clear coating. It'll make it a lot more simple to clear coat if they're separate. This is the final sanding I'll be giving it. And then I'm gonna put some polyurethane on it. And I'm gonna paint it. I glued a little wire into the tail of this lure to kinda imitate a stinger. I was gonna sharpen it on the sander, but uh, that seemed a little dangerous. So I think I'm just gonna sand it flat. Now it won't stab anybody. So it looks like most of the hornet species, they live in Asia, and uh, the Asian ones have more of like an orange reddish hue to them, and I like that better. It just looks better to me. I think I'm gonna go for something a lot like that. Maybe hornets aren't so bad. They kill bees. As always, I'm gonna start out with a base coat of white. Then I'm gonna do a coat of yellow. Yeah, I'll do the yellow, and then I'll go back over with some darker shades of yellow, maybe even orange. It doesn't look like they're quite red. They're, they're more orange than anything. So I think what's gonna look the best for this bait is I'm gonna put the black stripes and all the black features on it right now. And then when I go back over that with some transparent orange and darker yellows, it won't really make a difference to the black, but um, it'll, it'll uh, give it some nice fading where the colors are. And most of the black, what I'm gonna do is brush it on by hand. Actually all the black, all the black on this Hornet, I'm gonna uh, brush on by hand. So I'm finished with all of the black, and now I mixed up a uh, kind of a crimson, yellowish color to go over a lot of the yellow with. So I ended up just doing a little bit of the top on this bait with that crimson color. And now I'm gonna actually get the airbrush back out and go over a lot of this bait with some orange. And then the painting really is gonna be done. It's gonna look good. The orange is really not showing up on camera. But it's there. All right, time to clear coat. For this bait, I'm just gonna use a 30 minute epoxy. A little faster working time than normal, but uh, just as durable, just as shiny. I actually prefer using 30 minute epoxies, really. I think that's the tiniest signature I've ever done.
This rotisserie, for goodness sake. I'm about to throw it away. I figured out what I'm gonna do for the wings and the antenna on this Hornet. I've never done anything like it before, but I think it'll work. It's what I'm gonna do next when this thing's done clear coating. So I got all of this uh, fly tying flashy string stuff. I don't know exactly what they're called. Crystal Flashaboo. So I think I'm going to use this color for the antennas. I might use multiple colors. I like this gold for the wings. Maybe add in a little bit of orange to match the body. That's pretty good too. I don't know. I'll come up with something for the wings. There's the antennas. I think red and orange is gonna look the best. So I decided on, I'm gonna put uh, three reds and an orange together. And I'm just gonna glue this end, kinda of twist it and glue it, and then stick it in the hole for the wings. There's one wing. I have to cut it to size still, but that'll work. There's the other wing. So I decided to glue all of the strands together on the ends of the wings. Because hornet wings, they look pretty thin. I don't think it would make sense if there are a whole bunch of strands flashing around in the water. That looks pretty good. I'm just gonna throw some hooks on this now and it's ready to fish. So you all know I give away every bait that I make on my Patreon page. Every dollar that you pledge every month is a chance to win every bait that I made that month is how it works. So if you want a chance to win this bait and every bait that I make this month, go help out the channel on Patreon. And if you're not a Patreon, still, thank you for watching. This is where I'm going to be fishing this bait. It's really rocky right here. The water's pretty murky right now, so it's hard to see. but the bass hide down there in those rocks. I'm just gonna twitch this hornet across the top. Time to see how this guy works. That one scared the crap out of me. I was pulling him out of the water, or I was pulling my bait out of the water, and he hit it before I got it out. Whew. Let's clean you off a little bit. Number one. Before I caught that bass, I was probably fishing top water for, I don't know, 30 minutes. It seems like the top water bite's kind of off right now. So I was just reeling the hornet in, just like that, giving it some twitches. And it kind of dances and goes subsurface, which is nice. There's another way to fish this thing. Man, this thing goes down about a foot when you just give it a steady retrieve. That's kind of cool. It wiggles a little bit down there. It's like a little dive bombing hornet. <laughs> I'm gonna change spots. 
I'm gonna go over to where water feeds into this pond. The wings and the antennas are, are holding up. That's good. This is where the water feeds into the pond. There's always a little bluegill right here. I think I might go to a lake with this thing. Made it to the lake. Any action? Uh, a couple no, days. Really, Dang. I feel like I just got 20 ticks. I'm gonna have to check myself. I think I'm good. All right, I fished this lake before, but I've never fished this spot on it. There's crappie in here, there's yellow bass, there's largemouth bass, there's quite a few different species. I'm gonna go to one more spot today on the same lake. Hopefully that spot was just overfished and there were no fish there. And that they're biting somewhere else. Hopefully. It's a long walk to another spot. I'm walking along this tree line, waiting to see an opening where I can get to the lake, but I haven't seen any yet. I'm almost all the way onto the other side. Oh, is this one? I think it is. Well, not much was happening at that lake, but that's okay. We got a fish on the Hornet today, and that's what matters. If you guys got any ideas of uh, other baits that I could make, other little creatures that would work good as a lure. I really wanna try new stuff with the lures that I make. So yeah, let me know if you do have any ideas. On to the next bait.